Hi hey everybody, hope you're well. Um, Xbox One repair video, a bit random today. Uh, this was off eBay, it cost me 60 quid and it was claimed that it packed up during a game, wouldn't work. Spoiler alert, it's actually the power supply. This is a day one edition Xbox One. This is probably seven years old. These power supplies are notorious. What I did, what I'll show you, I tested it using an Xbox 360 power supply, which you can do because it provides about 14 amps on the 12 volt rail. As long as you don't overload it, you'll be fine. And one of these adapters, which you can get off eBay for about five quid. So I used this to rule out that it was actually the power supply that was the issue and not the Xbox. So this video is pretty much going to be me tearing apart this um, power supply, showing you where it blew, showing you all the components, because I had a bit of a nightmare trying to work out what the component values were. I'm going to link all of those, show you all of those, show you me repairing this, put it back together and getting it working. So let's get on with it. Put the power supply in there. And we do this live. <laughs> so strip. Oh my god. So it looks like we're going to be tearing down this power brick. And there we go. 100% is the power supply. Safety first. Make sure there's nothing on these caps because they are nasty. Can be nasty. Zero volts on there. Okay, happy with that. Not an expert on this at all, but switching my power supply, that is a fuse, F1. So that's the first port of call. Then it looks like we've got some uh, XY capacitors, some chokes. I don't know what these two transformers are doing. This is probably the bridge rectifier. That is another, I think, bypass. No, that is another film capacitor. I would guess that this is the standby rail, but I'm really not sure. And obviously primary transformer I think these are probably MOSFETs and these are probably diodes as uh, a couple of that's that's the output filtering diode there on, on the standby rail so the first thing I'm going to do is check the fuse see if there's any dry solder joints underneath so basically we've got to get this board out which is incredibly easy but we've got shielding underneath so it appears I can check the fuse without taking the shielding off let's do that first we can just about get to the fuse under here so we can see if the fuse is actually blown or not. And it would appear that the fuse has blown. And you might say, excellent, bridge the fuse, but there's a reason the fuse has blown. Okay. So this does actually tie up with the vendor's uh, explanation of what happened, that it suddenly packed up halfway through a game because that kind of catastrophic failure that would cause it to suddenly pack up halfway through a game. Let me just take a second here to try and work out exactly which component exploded. Whatever's exploded was here. Let's just get right in there. That is whatever exploded. So what I'm going to do is clean this up with some isoprop. So this is the isolation track. This is the output stage. This is the high voltage side. It's a failure on the high side. So the fuse is, the fuse is here. This is all the high side and it's blown something on the actual high side. I will check the output side but it looks like a fault on the high side. Yeah, the other thing is you don't really want carbon bridging the high to the low side. That is effing dangerous, frankly. So what I will do is just see whether this transformer is still intact. Because if the transformer is not intact, then there's not a lot of point in carrying on here. It's still got continuity there. So we might have got away with that. That appears to have survived. What we want to know is why has this blown its guts? What's near it that's made it blow its guts? So I'll put you on the microscope in a sec, but basically the negative of that capacitor has blown the pad off. It's taken out this resistor, and this resistor is linked back to one of the pins, probably the gate, on a chip that's under here. And this is probably the PWM chip, um, the chip that kind of governs 
depending on what it sees being fed back from the output stage, it will vary the duty cycle of the chopping transistor and, and, and stabilise the output voltage. I mean, this doesn't look great. I have run the probes across this chip. I mean, they're all supposed to be shorted. But you see we've got a short there between the high and the low side. I don't think that's supposed to be the case. So I think what's happened here is that this chip has gone short and there was a kind of a like a blowout hole, like a black soot under here. And then what's happened is that this kind of uh, sacrificial resistor, I think it's a 2R2 if you need to, to get it the right, it's actually blown off it. But I think this chip has failed, the PWM chip's failed short. That's blown this resistor. And in the process of, or while it was doing that, it's managed to vaporize this part of the trace. So hopefully that's all that's wrong with it. So these are supposed to be connected on the PWM chip. But these aren't. Okay, so that's the first problem here. <laughs> Basically disintegrated. So I can't even check this because it could still be holding the voltage for it. I know I, I discharged the leads, but the leads aren't con connected to anything. So 180 microfarad, 500, 400 volts. That's our first issue. Forty-six. Diode here appears to be good. And look, underneath it, lo and behold, a skid mark. Okay, so here's our PWM chip flipped over, and you can see a massive hole in the bottom of it. So I'm pretty sure that's the fault, or one of them anyway. So I've ordered another PWM chip, and I will link it in the description, but yeah, pretty conclusive. There we go, that's about right. There we go, that's about right. Amazingly that survived. One, two, it's good. One, two, it's good. One, two, it's good. Obviously these are all connected, but before we had a short between there and one of these. All right, it's gone. So I'm pretty sure that was the, the fault. Main two faults, PWM chip, primary bulk capacitor. Third fault, or probably what saved the rest of it, was R108 or 801, which was a resistor on the board which blew, which was connected to the gate of this chip. And uh, I'll scavenge the resistor from somewhere else, clean it up, repair the traces, see how we go. Here is my gizmo tester, and what I'm doing here is these couple of caps here. That one seems to be okay. This one's 10 mics at 50 volts. What I've got to do now is pull this down to here. So it's a pad that was blown off. Blown off track there with a solder leg. And this one as well. There we go. Okay, so R801 is a 2R2 resistor. I'm not sure that this is supposed to be this colour. Probably isn't. It's on the end of that. One of the 5 volt standby contacts on the coil is kind of... <laughs> it's not blowing it up, but it's it's not done very good to this, uh, this solder join here. So I'm going to repair that, cover these traces over, you can see I've repaired or put a new capacitor on you to the leg to bridge across there. Um, this is where the chip's going to go, and I have got the chip now. I'm just not sure about this C806, that white one there, whether it's supposed to be that colour or whether it's blown, because that is in the line of fire. So the leftmost pin you see here is the positive and bridge rectifier. This is the 5 volt standby rail. Comes down here, comes down the skinny little track, goes through R802, R803, R812, 
down it's going through where I've marked it red there um, that's linking to the trying to look and do it at the same time it's linking to this pin here that's a N channel MOSFET 60 volt MOSFET apparently and it's it's marked W2K it then goes down through this capacitor here which you'll see has actually got a big crack through it and then from this pin on this MOSFET we're going down into inputting on this MOSFET and then go down this skinny little track here underneath that zero ohm resistor, underneath that other resistor coming along here, coming along here, coming along here and it disappears into here now this is where we start getting problems and what's happening here is that the input pin or the, the governor pin if you like of the switch mode power chip is linked to that track so if this chip failed short if we had a short between the governor pin which is this one here and the source here which is basically ground we would have a short between effectively the positive of the bridge rectifier and ground via a load of resistors Replaced now, replaced this was it a uh, capacitor that was the correct one? I assumed it's the same as this one and uh, 10 uh, nanofarads. Okay, so that's the power supply back together. I checked all these caps, these caps, these caps, these caps on my gizmo, they're fine. Um, I have checked all of these uh, MOSFETs on my gizmo, they're fine. I checked the bridge rectifier, that's fine. I did change this. And this was this uh, guy here, and that's supposed to be 0.47 um, microfarads, and it's it's kind of a filter on the input. I found this in a drawer. Uh, it, it's about half good. This was less than half good, so I've switched it out. I know from experience that when these 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 start to fail, things don't tend to turn on. Also changed the MOV, the metal oxide varistor there, just because it's seven years old. I put a new one of those in, and these are the other components that I had to change out. So the fuse, the fuse are replaced with a eBay job uh, T4A fuse there. This capacitor was the one on the shot, the uh, shot line, the one that we used the leg to make the trace with. That's a 10 mic 50 volt cap, and then obviously the switch mode chip, which we've replaced there. Now what I will do off camera is uh, put some bathroom silicon just underneath some of these components that are flapping around just to stop them from vibrating. The only other things to note is that um, when I was doing the video, I've totally didn't realize that I'd knocked this, this uh, resistor off. This is marked 30C. I had Hell's own job trying to find it on the internet but it is marked 30C and it is a 20 kilo ohm resistor. Um, so don't put any other value on that because otherwise you'll have all sorts of fun and games. Um, other things to note, this uh, capacitor here next to this chip is ever so slightly, well it's a little bit smashed on one side that may have been damaged, it may have been rough handling. I don't know what this chip is, it's a proprietary chip, so I'm loath to change it. It seems to work fine without it. That's carbon residue. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the power supply plugged in. It's got a dim white light, but it's got a white light, and the light does go yellow when it's powered down. But as you can see, it's working fine. So hopefully that helps someone. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe. See you soon. Cheers, bye.